This video is brought to you with the support of TrueFire. Learn, practice, and play with TrueFire. Hi, this is Keith Williams. Welcome to 5 Watt World, Ernst and helping you get the most music from the least gear. By the time ACDC had released Highway to Hell in 1979, I was already deep into a world of 1950s jazz reissues where I'd stay for the next 30 years or so, blissfully unaware of musical trends. While the band was too popular to altogether avoid, their music remained on the edges of my hearing, out of focus and never in a context where I was really present to appreciate it. So like the generations younger than me, the ACDC heavy soundtrack for Iron Man 2 hit me like a hammer in 2010. In a theater with all the Marvel pyrotechnics and concert level volume, I was left wondering at the power of this band and its place in hard rock history. I started watching videos of their concert at Donington Park, and there, duck walking his way across the edge of the stage was Angus Young, in his British schoolboy uniform, as he had been for 40 years, rocking with the energy of a 20-year-old. ACDC is the perfect live rock band, singable lyrics, a killer groove, and an endless well of stage presence. And in that context, I finally got it. So if you always loved Angus' as playing, or like me, came late to appreciate his genius, and you're up for a parade of classic SGs, then stay tuned, because this is the short history of the guitars of Angus Young. If you enjoy our videos, make sure to subscribe, and if you've already subscribed, grab a hoodie or a stomp preset pack to support what we do. And to become a bigger part of 5 Watt World, sign up for the friends of 5 Watt on Patreon. The links are in the description. Angus Young was born on March 31, 1955 in the working-class neighborhood of Cranhill in Glasgow, Scotland. The family emigrated to Sydney, Australia in 1963. It was a large and musical family of six children. Angus has said in interviews that he and Malcolm had a chance to see the Yardbirds when they came to Australia, and the band at that time featured Jimmy Page, surely a formative experience. But when he heard Jimi Hendrix later that year, it changed his entire idea of what an electric guitar could do. His brother George would be a founding member of the Easy Beats, and Angus would form ACDC with his brother Malcolm in 1973. They cut one single, Can I Sit Next to You Girl, which would later be re-recorded with Bon Scott as the new vocalist in the band. The band name was suggested by their sister Margaret, who saw the letters ACDC on the back of her sewing machine. Angus would try different stage costumes before settling on the iconic schoolboy outfit, which was also suggested by his sister. She sewed the original uniform for him, and when it fell apart from stage use, he used his actual uniform from Ashfield Boys High School in Sydney. After his first inexpensive acoustic guitar in 1971, around the age of 16, Angus would buy his first SG from a music shop down the road from the family home in Sydney. He used this guitar exclusively for the first few years, up until around 1978. It was a 70 or 71 SG standard. He soon removed the chrome pickup covers, though the pickups would later be replaced with new Gibson humbuckers. The guitar had a long vibrilla tailpiece with the arm removed and, of course, the batwing pickguard. It's this guitar that you hear on their debut album, High Voltage, from 1975. In the following three years, they built their reputation as a hard rock band with their follow-up albums, TNT, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, Let There Be Rock, and Powerage. There's no indication that Angus was particularly interested in adding new guitars to his stage arsenal for those first few years. Then, while in the States in 1978, Angus purchased what he called a few Gibson SGs at one of the music stores on 48th Street in New York. One that stood out was an early 70s SG standard, nearly identical to his original guitar, except that the original had a red cherry finish while this one had a walnut finish, and it was marked as a factory second. Angus said of the guitar, I remember when I first went to America, I bought some on that street in New York. There used to be a little shop on the corner where I bought a couple of SGs, and one of them was great. The guy who sold it to me told me that there was a two on the back of it, and apparently that's what they put on the rejects. So I said, yep, that's me. I used that guitar on Highway to Hell. Highway to Hell became their biggest selling album to date and launched them to international stardom. A 70s black and gold custom seems to have also been bought around that time. He played it on the tour following the 79 release of Highway to Hell, and then occasionally up until 81. This guitar was a 70s custom, based on the gold-plated hardware and the fact that the headstock is binding around the edges. Soon after the success of Highway to Hell, Bon Scott tragically died of alcohol poisoning. There was a question of whether the band would continue, but in the end, they decided to add Brian Johnson as the new vocalist. Five months later, their seminal, Back in Black, was released as a tribute to Scott. 
It quickly outstripped all the previous work and went on to go 22 times platinum in the U.S. alone. For many years, it was the second highest selling album of all time, just behind Michael Jackson's Thriller, which would be released in 1983. Two other guitars that Angus seems to have bought in that batch in 78 show up in the Premier Guitar Rig Rundown video from 2016. The first guitar was a 1968 Standard that Angus was using as his main guitar on the tour that year, refinished in black and with all new electronics purely being replaced because Angus has sweated them out over the years of shows. The second is a 1970s SG Custom. The guitar started life as a walnut finish and can be seen in the earliest photos of it in this color. He later modified it by removing the middle pickup and having it painted black. This custom was the main guitar used on the Back in Black tour. We don't know which guitars were used on the album recording, but he did buy all of these guitars immediately prior to the recording of the album Back in Black. In that rig rundown, the guitar tech stresses that Angus sweats so much during his performances that the pickups and pots need to be replaced routinely. They use standard Gibson pots, but the ridge volume knob is frequently replaced with the knob from a black panel Fender style amp because the ridges on the knob make it easier to use quickly on stage when he's sweating. The pickups are now replaced with custom wound Seymour Duncans that are fairly low output at 7.6 kilo ohms. The tech said that Angus puts the guitar on about eight for rhythm parts and guns it for full leads. Old school guitars straight into a wireless system into the amp with no overdrive or boost. Now it's worth mentioning here that the wireless systems are not perfect signal replicas and the Schaefer Vega diversity system used by Young contributed significantly to the sound of Angus's rig. They added that Angus uses Fender extra heavy picks, vintage ones where the heat stamp on the logo leaves a rough finish and Angus has always used Ernie Ball 9-42 strings. His third backup guitar on that tour in 2016 was a Brian Ray Model SG. This was a gift from Paul McCartney's guitarist Brian Ray, having had it built to Angus's preferred spec. The guitar tech emphasized that even though they share similar specs and pickups, each of these guitars sounds very different. I reached out to Truefire to be my sponsor because I've used them for years. With over 2 million users worldwide, whether you're a beginner, Intermediate or advanced level player, Truefire has lessons to enhance and inspire your playing. Get 35% off courses using the promo code 5 watt 35 Or like I do, sign up for the All Access Pass to use the entire Truefire catalog. I really like Truefire, and I think if you give them a shot, you'll like them too. Sign up now to start your journey to being a better guitarist. I'd like to thank Truefire for their support in making this video. Back in 1981, the release of For Those About to Rock We Salute You would cement ACDC as the most popular hard rock act of the decade. The next guitar Angus used is the Gibson SG Standard that started life with traditional inlays but was later modified by John Diggins of JD Guitars. Some of you might know that Diggins figures into the history of custom SG shaped guitars that were built for Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath by John Birch, where Diggins worked, and then by Diggins himself. This might have been a different guitar, or it might have been one of Angus's original two SGs. Diggins said that he modified the guitar in the early 80s, replacing the entire neck and adding the lightning bolt inlays on the fretboard. The guitar had been used so hard over the years that Diggins is quoted as saying that, in the end, the only thing left on the guitar was the head face with the original Gibson logo. Diggins also built Angus a fully custom JD guitar in 1981, and Angus took delivery of it just prior to the Monsters of Rock concert at Donington that year. Diggins said that Angus really liked the guitar and that he used it for the entire concert. A few photos of the show seem to confirm this, though it's always been Angus's preference to use a single guitar for the entire show if he can. The JD guitar is one of the guitars in the rotation in the 80s, but by and large, he used Gibson's after that. Interestingly, when Gibson came around to releasing an Angus Young signature guitar, it was this remade by John Diggins' guitars, lightning bolt inlays that were seen as iconic and the ones that were used. There was also an 81 SG standard that Angus used during the Back in Black tour in 80 and 81. He seems to have acquired the guitar at the time and began using it on the road immediately. It can be distinguished by the smaller block inlays that Gibson was using in that time period. Reportedly, the guitar had Gibson's factory Super Humbucker pickups, whose output was around 7.5K. These might have well influenced the output of the later Seymour Duncan custom pickups. 
Also in the early 80s, he was seen using a 70s standard equipped with a Zebra open coil front pickup and a custom JD pickup in the bridge. The JD pickups are a unique blade design. Again, this could well be one of the early 70s guitars brought back to life by Diggins, but we don't know. It's a walnut finish and it has a 70s batwing pickguard. Going into the late 80s, Angus moved away from using the 70s SGs in favor of a number of 60s and 60s style SGs. There's been talk that moving to this style of guitar was influenced by a deal with Gibson, but whatever the case, Angus would play these smaller pickguard style guitars from that point forward to this day. <laughs> This is very evident in the black 60s style standard that he used on tour after the 1990 release of Razor's Edge and then Ball Breaker in 95. In particular, he used the guitar on the 91 Live at Donington and the No Bull gig in 96. Though we're not sure that this is the same black guitar at both shows, the Trust Ride cover says Les Paul, indicating that at least the cover comes from a 61 or a 62 SG as the first two production years before Les Paul's endorsement deal with Gibson ran out. In the 90s, Angus was seen in a couple of interviews with an SG Jr. In particular, he played it in a duo with Brian Johnson in an interview with Howard Stern in 97. The 90s into the 2000s saw fewer albums coming out and lower sales for the band. Finally, after an eight-year break, in 2008, they released Black Ice, which debuted at number one in 29 different countries. In 2010, they released an album of their music that was used in the Iron Man 2 movie that would also reach number one in many countries. In 2014, Malcolm's ill health led to him retiring from touring, and their nephew Stevie, who had filled in for Malcolm on an earlier break, was brought in to play rhythm. In 2016, Brian Johnson had to briefly leave the band under doctor's orders out of fear of permanently losing his hearing, and Axel Rose filled in to finish the tour. Malcolm passed away in November of 2017, and the papers all seemed to run the picture of Angus carrying Malcolm's Gretsch guitar out of the funeral service. It was as if... That guitar, Malcolm's constant companion through his lifetime in the band, held his spirit, and carrying the guitar, Angus was carrying Malcolm from the church that day. I'm sure any guitarist seeing that picture understood that instinctively, and like me, choked up at the sight. As he really only used one primary guitar through his career with the band, it makes sense to mention Malcolm Young's 63 Jet Firebird here. With the number of modifications it went through over the years, it might be worth its own separate short history video someday. But in brief, this is a 63 Gretsch that started life as a red double-cut Firebird. As such, it originally had Filtertron pickups. Malcolm would strip the finish off the guitar, add and then later remove a third pickup in the middle, leaving the guitar with just one pickup in the bridge. It also left then two holes in the top where the neck and middle pickup had been removed. That vintage bridge Filtertron pickup runs directly to a master volume pot and then onto the amp. All other wiring was removed. The guitar has the original Burns vibrato at the base with the arm removed. This gives the strings a very long run from the bridge to the tailpiece, and this influences the tone of the guitar greatly. The guitar was strung with strings from 12 to 56, including a wound third string. These are common gauges for an acoustic guitar, and the semi-hollow Gretsch with that open pickup cavities and AC-DC stage volumes must have had all kinds of sympathetic vibrations going on. And to finish off the guitars on stage, Bassist Cliff Williams joined ACDC in 1978. He arrived with a 1976 Music Man Stingray running into an Ampeg SVT head and, like his bandmates, has rarely strayed from the formula that made it all happen for him. Ernie Ball recently issued a signature bass modeled after that original 76 Stingray. ACDC was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2003 by Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. It always pains me that I can't use the original music in the videos due to copyright issues. If I did, any ad revenue from the video would go directly to the record company as part of a bulk payment, and a small bit of it maybe eventually might get back to the band. But here in particular, the unique, seemingly simple heart-pounding genius of ACDC is missed. 
My friend and YouTube music theory guru, Rick Beato, has made multiple videos about ACDC, and about Angus's soloing in particular. I tend to the logical side of things, so I found it reassuring that Rick could apply some science to the feeling that we all cannot resist. About why ACDC makes you want to jump up and down, throw your devil horn hands up in the air, and scream the lyrics at the top of your lungs. First, I need to thank Angus Clark for taking on the daunting task of providing some SG-driven rock for the intro and outro. Who better, right? Check out Angus's courses on True Fire, in particular his Hard Rock Survival course, videos that cover some ACDC. I need to once again thank the folks at Wildwood Guitars for permission to use a clip of Greg Koch playing an amazing 61 reissue SG. I need to thank Rick Beato for his permission to use the clips of his video on reimagining a solo for Back in Black with playing by Rick and the ever-entertaining Phil X. I'd like to thank Dan Kapilovich for his amazing Round Guitar website. It's a great resource, and I recently got to know Dan via email. Check out his site for even more guitar nerd info. I need to thank my script editor, Perry McManus, for working on another script. Perry's almost exactly half my age, and it's a testament to ACDC that we both react to their music in nearly the same way. I need to thank everyone that stopped by the store and grabbed a hoodie or a stomp preset pack. In particular, I need to thank the friends of 5 Watt. You're all 5 Watt World. I just make the videos. If you enjoyed this short history of the guitars of Angus Young, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that too. Thanks for hanging with me till the end. Until next time, I'm Keith Williams. Thanks for being a part of the 5 Watt World.